Uh... Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to repair your oracle if it has the er uh error or if your milk temperature reading is off the scale like this one. Whichever symptom you have, it generally means you have a damaged wire on the thermistor. This is located in the tip of the wand. The wire can get damaged over time from all the cleaning, so be careful not to be too rough around where the sensor is. Or worse, pinch and twist it when cleaning around the tip. This is something I'm guilty of too, as it's a natural way of cleaning it. Also, make sure that the orange gasket inside the tip is always seated properly too. This helps keep it into a fixed position. It's common that these get either lost or damaged, so I'd recommend you replace yours if this is the case. The best way to confirm for sure if the wire is damaged on yours is to remove the connector inside the main board at the back and measure how many ohms it reads. It should read around 50k at room temperature, so if it's way out of this range or more likely it's open circuit, then you know you'll need to replace it. Okay, so once you've confirmed you have a faulty sensor, how can we repair it? Well, if you took this to any service shop, they'll almost certainly quote you for a new steam wand assembly. These alone are around $150 to $250 plus labour, so it can get quite expensive. The whole wand assembly is fairly simple to replace yourself, but it doesn't take too much more time to just replace the part inside that's faulty. If I was doing this for a customer, I'd usually replace the whole wand because of warranties and what have you. But if it was my own machine, then I'd certainly go down the repair route, as you could get it back up and running for, say, around 50 bucks or so. Yes! Woo! 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 Yes! So let's start by taking a look at what you'll need. Besides some basic tools and either a soldering iron or another way to join some wires, you'll need a replacement thermistor. These come in a variety of values and are measured by their resistance at 25 Celsius. As I said earlier, the one used in the wand is a 50 kilo ohm. Unfortunately, Breville doesn't sell this part separately. However, it's actually the same value and almost the same form factor as the coffee boiler sensor, which you can find for around $30 or so. And this is very much the same as the one we'll be using today. The one I like to use has a thicker wire, um, which I find is easy to thread through. But like I said, if you search for Breville's own coffee NTC, that will also work. If you're going to order from elsewhere, then just make sure the wire is able to withstand at least around 140 degrees Celsius. I'm in the process of getting some of these sensors made, so I'll leave a link in the description when they're in stock. In future, I might also include them in the survival kits, depending on how often people are requesting them. Okay, so with that, let's start by taking the lid off the machine so we can free up some slack on the existing wire and also it will give us the ability to pull the new wire back through. Once the lid is off, cut the cable tires to free up the wire. Disconnect the pipe from the steam wand, as this will give you more wiggle room later. Then remove the three screws holding the wand in. This will also allow us more room to feed the new wire through. Now here's the important part, you'll need to cut off the cable tie inside the wand, otherwise you'll find it very difficult to pull the wire back through without damaging it. Once done, unplug the steam wand cable and put it through so we have plenty of wire to work with. Next, take off the tip and remove the gasket.
Then pull off the outer casing and remove the single screw holding the wand handle in place. This will allow us access to the existing wire. Then take out the remaining cable tie and cut the wire to the old sensor so it can be removed. I found a couple of different designs on these ones, maybe yours is different to both of these. If so, let me know in the comments, but both the types here can be repaired in this way. The bottom type we can throw away as we won't be using any of what remains, but if you have the top type, then we will need to keep the plastic shroud. It's very soft plastic, so be careful you don't damage it when removing it from the old thermistor. Whichever type you have, you're going to need a couple of small standard Breville O-rings to help stop any steam escaping back up inside of the wand. Then if you have the type with the shroud, fit that onto the replacement part too. Now the difficult part begins. You'll find it's a bit of a struggle to get the new wire through, so I like to use a little bit of grease and make an arrow shaped cut in the wire to help it through. You'll find it's easier if you loosen the pipe too. This is why I said to disconnect it earlier. When you do manage to thread it through, you'll need to attach it to the old wire. The reason I do this from below rather than above is so that I can pull the wire through easier, as it's difficult to get through the upper part of the wand. I also find it's easier if you split the wire at this point so you can pull each side independently through. I like to use these self soldering connectors, but solder and very small heat shrink will work just fine. Just make sure whatever you use is as slim as possible as there's barely any space available when it comes to getting the wand casing back together. Once you've soldered the wire, you might want to apply a little more grease and pull it back through from above. You'll then need to make sure the wire is nice and tidy and well away from where the screw is going to go back, otherwise you'll find yourself re-soldering it again. And that's about it. Just a quick test now to make sure we are measuring okay. Then it's just tidying up the cables and putting the machine back together. If you've enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.